Happy, happy new year to you all. Uh, yeah, I have a new video for you guys uh, to start 2021 in a good way. So yeah, uh, good morning to you all. Um, hi, hello, my name is EJ and I do narrated art time lapses, uh, mostly digital paintings um, and some digital sculpts. Um, and yeah, uh, every now and then some traditional artwork as well too. So yeah, so yeah, my name is EJ and this is my gig, Narrated Art Time Lapses on my YouTube channel. So yeah, we are at the very beginning of a new year. So I hope you had a great holiday and I hope your new year is going well. Um, so to start things off, I guess it's time for me to talk about what is going on in my screen right now. Okay, so right now I'm drawing a bunch of characters. It looks like they're all fighting and training and well at first it looks like they're fighting but they're actually training. Um, to preface what I'm doing real quick, uh, I guess it's important for me to talk about uh, the impetus for this particular artwork. Um, I am a member of Daily Spit Paint. Uh, it's a very very cool group in Facebook. It's a Facebook group and Every day they post about four prompts for anyone to do a 30 minute speed paint. <laughs> yeah, just 30 minutes is all you get to do your painting. And for this particular day, uh, September 18 of 2018, wow, <laughs> this is a while back. Um, the particular prompt for that day is amateur night. And that's night with a K, so you know, knighthood and um, soldierist kind of stuff. So, um, I took a very literal uh, interpretation of the prompt. Um, amateur knight is kind of a pun, a play in words. It's supposed to signify uh, amateurs playing in a bar or cafe, you know, amateur musicians or amateur comedians, whatever that amateur might be. Um, they're obviously performing in front of a crowd, um, and this is typically reserved for professionals, but obviously they're amateurs, so that is the whole point <laughs> of Amateur Night. Um, but obviously for this particular prompt, they are talking about knighthood, and I could have done something fancy with the interpretation. I've seen a few very funny interpretations. One is a knight. K N I G H T singing in front of stage for amateur night. So yeah, that was a pretty funny interpretation, of course. But I went with a very literal, um, straightforward interpretation, which is what we're seeing right now. Basically, what we're seeing right now is this amateur night. He just got defeated by uh, a veteran knight, and yeah, he's pretty much down on the ground and the veterans kind of pointing his sword towards him kind of indicating that you know will you yield to me or something to that effect you know it's um a very straightforward illustration of the prompt so yeah but that's the idea where it came from or where the idea came from um and so yeah um three minutes has passed uh this 30 minute speed paint is speeded up to about five minutes if i'm not wrong so this speed paint is almost done basically um so just to quickly recap what happened so far in the first three minutes at least i obviously did a sketch i obviously did a quick color and i did a quick smudge which i just got done um the quick smudge just basically like blends the colors and now i'm doing a very very quick uh detailing which my detailing is pretty much just making my edges sharper just to kind of make things look clearer. Um, it's easy to tell what's going on because there's quite a few shapes that kind of indicates like what is up, what is going on, right? Um, you could see two people um, fighting in the background and then another two group of two people just watching this amateur night just get beaten. And of course, I'm working on the veteran right now just quickly sketching them in and so yeah i'm doing this real this sketch or slash speed paint real quick because i like i said the whole point of the spit paint group is to do your work as fast as you can um 
just to get the idea. Uh, the whole idea behind the group is not to create finished work, but to uh, generate as many ideas as you can for your artwork before committing to a final product. Because um, this is pretty much a standard practice, an industry standard practice for all the new art beginners and noobs out there. Um, you prototype as many artwork as you can before committing to a final look. So this is what this is, you know, it's, that's what this whole group is, you know, working real fast, real quick. You don't have to be perfect. And obviously mine's not perfect. It's very rough. Um, so yeah, it's a very impressionistic style of painting. Uh, I, I guess is my best way of describing it. Um, but anyways, um, I really, really love this pea paint. After I'm done with this pea paint, which you can tell this 30 minute one is almost done. Um, as soon as I finish the amateur guy who's down on the ground looking up at the veteran, um, you'll see things are about to change. And you know what? I just noticed something really, really cool about this 30 minute speed paint, which I'm going to mention later. <laughs> Because what's going to happen in the next few minutes is um, me resetting this speed paint to do a three hour speed paint. Lately, that's been my workflow where I typically prototype some of my artworks in 30 minute time frames. And then I do a longer one, um, still kind of classify as a speed paint because anything under five hours, I classify as a speed paint. Um, that's an arbitrary time uh, I kind of base that time based on some of the plain air painters really if we were to discuss like really really technical speed painting speed painting should be no more than two hours that's it <laughs> you should have a finished artwork in two hours that's what I would classify as a true speed paint um, some people are a little lax, a little more relaxed. Uh, they stretch it out to five hours. Um, and the best way for me to describe the reasoning for this is, is this, right? When the plain air painters back in the Impressionist era started doing their um, outside paintings, that's what plain air painting means. Uh, it means to paint on location. Once they started doing their painting locations, a lot of them had to work fast because the sun moves really fast and it changes everything that you see. Uh, the light will change, the shadows will change. So early in the morning and late at night, uh, dusk, during the dusk time and the dawn time, the light changes real fast, real quick. So you get about like two hours to paint your scene in. During noontime, it's a little bit different because the sun is higher up, so the shadows don't change as much. So, you know, I'd say between 11 to like maybe 3 o'clock or so if you're living up north, right? Um, you get about four hours, three to four hours for, for working if you're painting on location. So that's kind of where I get my time basically you know um i try to aim for around two to three hour speed paint after i do my 30 minute sketch or 30 minute speed paint then i do like a three hour one a little bit more developed and then if i really really like the illustration after doing like a three to five hour speed paint um then i develop it some more which if you've been watching my channel i think you pretty much know that this is my standard operating procedure so yeah, <laughs> I guess that's my quick explanation for what my speed paint process is. So anyways, we just got done with the 30 minute speed paint. And now I decided to go ahead and do my three hour speed paint. Um, a little bit more developed. And basically what I just basically did was I just ended up taking the first one, the 30 minute one. And right off the bat, the very first thing I did is to do a much more detailed sketch of the main two characters, which is the amateur and the veteran. Uh, clearly, you could see the amateur right now. Um, I'm totally doing uh, a much better sketch of him. And then, of course, I'm going to move him around 
put him in a position, which there I am putting him in a position. And then obviously the next one that I'm going to do a sketch of is going to be the veteran. Now, earlier I mentioned something very, very unique about uh, the amateur on the 30 minute version. The amateur on the 30 minute version looks like he's smiling, like he he got defeated and he has a good humor about it, right? Like, oh yeah, I got defeated, get it on. And so it looks like he's got a grin on his face, like this is no big deal. I'm learning a lesson, yet it da. And then when I started my three hour speed paint, this time around when I did the sketch of the amateur, he was frowning. It looks like he's really mad and aggravated that he got defeated, right? Well, when I posted this particular artwork for critique, that was one of the first things that people mentioned, uh, particularly Element from uh, my this Discord channel that I'm part of, uh, SketchZone.net is a Discord channel. Has no complete relation to the SketchZone Sketch podcast, just to clarify. Um, but SketchZone.net is um, a bunch of artists uh, that, you know, get together and talk about art <laughs> and encourage each other and whatnot. And Element is a member of that uh, group. We met, actually, in conceptart.org before conceptart.org went kaput and then we kind of migrated towards sketchzone.net the discord channel so anyways element was the one the guy who really pointed it out who told me that you know you need to change his frown because well we're looking at the amateur guy right now he looks like he's really mad and so he was pointing it out and i I thought it was kind of funny that he mentioned it because i don't think he's seen the 30 minute version and so yeah for him to say to make him a little bit more friendlier um which i did eventually uh, the end product i ended up changing him around um i thought it was interesting that i mentioned that <laughs> just simply because i totally forgot that i initially did that in the first place where i had the amateur smiling and then somehow for some odd reason i changed it to frowning uh, I didn't have a conscious thought as for why that is. It seems much more dramatic, actually, if you think about it, you know, for the amateur to be frowning like, oh, man, I'm so upset. We got defeated. But yeah. Anyway, so that was like my funny aside moment. Um, so now basically what I'm doing is just really getting a better sketch of the characters. Uh, it's not the best sketch, obviously. Um, this is still rougher, uh, compared to like a good, nice, clean sketch, but on the same token, this is a little bit more detailed than my rough, rough sketch that I did on the very first time around. So yeah, um, basically what I'm doing is just, you know, quickly sketching the characters in and then I'm going to recolor them. Um, and the way my coloring process goes is I basically use uh, the random mech shape that comes, the random mech shape brush that comes with Krita. I set like a hue variation on it just to kind of vary up my colors so it's not so plain and boring, you know, and just a little bit more variation to it. And so I would color with this. Uh, underneath my line sketch and then after that I'd merge everything into one layer and then slowly smudge things around the whole point of me smudging is just so that I could get a base paint to do my details on Um, by the time I'm done with the smudge paint everything's kind of fuzzy Um, it looks kind of blurry but the shapes are readable uh, which is really what I'm after. Uh, so long as the shapes are readable, then I know where things will be. I know where to sharpen my shadows or sharpen my edges and, you know, whatnot. So, yeah, um, that's basically what you'll see me do in my next few, in the next few minutes. Um, I'm almost done with this sketch, so you can see that I pretty much just finished the sketch and kind of placing my characters and again... I'm going to start my recoloring process. 
Um, so yeah. <laughs> And then after my coloring process, I would do this much. And then after this much, I would do my detailing process. And again, my detailing process is like a three-step process that I repeat over and over again in parts of my image, which the three-step process is I delineate my edges or sharpen my edges or make my edges a little bit better just so that the shapes read better. I accentuate the shadows. If the shadows need a little darkening, I kind of just darken them a little bit. And of course, I add highlights. So yeah, that's what you'll see me do in the next few minutes.
So at this point, my smudging process is about to be done and I have started my detailing process starting with the background. Uh, you can see me kind of sharpen out some, kind of sharpen the shapes of some of the crowd in the back. So yeah, uh, so while this is going uh, and while this is playing, I'm going to talk real quick about some of my own critiques and and as well as some of the critiques that I got from Element and Raman um, about this particular piece. Uh, Raman is another artist uh, from SketchOn.net. He actually started SketchOn.net. Again, no <laughs> relation to the SketchOn podcast. It just so happens to be named the same. But anyways, um, so as for my own critiques about this particular piece, um, I love the colors. <laughs> I guess we'll start off with that. I just absolutely love the colors. Uh, I love Curtis' new artistic color selector. It's such a nice fancy tool. Um, I basically always have troubles with colors and picking colors. Uh, so having like a color scheme in my head before starting out a project helps tremendously. Um, like for example, I would never have thought purples and oranges would go well together, but they do in this particular piece. Like I was so stunned at how amazing that looks. So yeah. Um, so basically when I was doing my coloring face, I turn on the gamut um, selection tool, which kind of limits, you know, your selection area in the color wheel. And then I use the artistic tool to basically help me figure out like what range I'll be working with. Um, and I decided that I was going to do a split complementary color scheme, which I realize now that I'm notorious for doing split complementary. Like I really need to explore other color schemes. Um, so clearly this started out as a split complementary where I have predominantly oranges and purples as my color and then cyan as my opposite color for contrast now in the end product which you saw with the end product um, at the very beginning of the video i actually decided to go ahead and go analogous on the color scheme and it was such a quick edit because all i really had to do was change the cyan skies hue into something more orangey slash brown um, and so yeah it totally changed the color scheme and I think having it analogous was a little bit better um, just because you know as unique and as cool the cyan is as a contrast to all the purples and oranges like the cyan really works well as a contrast between the purples and the oranges the only problem is that i didn't spread the cyan around as much like it would have been nice if the cyan was sp spread like at the bottom of the painting but all the cyan was just pretty much just on top and that's it and it kind of lends like a boring color structure to the piece so i obviously changed it to analogous um but I love the color scheme, man. I love those purple and oranges. I, I just thought that they work well. Um, again, some of the other critiques that I got, I've obviously mentioned. Uh, the biggest one was the uh, amateurish expression. Um, for him to be less frowning and to be more accepting of the fact that he got defeated by this veteran. So... I got that comment, of course, from uh, Element, which is a great, awesome, awesome comment. Um, thank you for that, uh, sir. Um, so yeah, that was an awesome critique, and of course, of which I followed through, which I now realize I started out my 30 minutes speed paint that way. Anyway, so I thought it was just really funny because I've always thought that amateur was always just frowning in the first place, right? I, I thought the 30 minute version has a frowning amateur and then I drew the three hour version as frowning and then Element was like, change it to a happier guy. And then I did and then I realized, hey, I started out with the happy guy in the first place. <laughs> I didn't know why I just didn't follow through with that. So yeah, um, 
it's kind of funny to look back at your old artwork really this happens all the time where you know i forget how i did my particular artwork and like looking back at it especially looking at the process i'm like oh yes that's how things started out so it's always kind of unique and fun to just do this whole thing which is part of the reason why i'm doing it so but anyways yeah so he gave me a critique on amateur improve it a little bit he also gave me a very cool critique about the swords the swords are obnoxiously huge so they got uh smaller and skinnier and more appropriate um there are swords that are this big that exist uh, i think they're called like broad swords or something um they're heavier swords um but it's not your classic typical sword i mean the swords are just too huge so i you know after hearing the comment from element i executed that too because i thought that that was a very good point so the swords got changed i obviously gave the veteran a little bit more highlight because i realized that he was too much in the dark so the veteran got a few more highlights so those are some of the changes that i executed after i got the critique which unfortunately i did not record it uh, so yeah now i got missed out on the recording um but the end of the end product of this recording is pretty much close to the final end product after the edits so yeah it's not really that far off um some of the things that i kind of made note of uh especially just recently um I, I viewed the video real quick before doing this recording obviously and i made a few notes and one of the things that i made a note of is composition i feel like it, the composition could have been better could have been more dynamic the way i laid it out right now is just it's just too straightforward it feels like the camera is just too front or make them too front center uh, man it's hard for me to describe what i'm thinking in my head um it feels like there could have been a better composition and again this is the reason why those 30 minutes speed paints is important because in a production setting um you typically just do not do just one 30 minute speed paint typically you do like four or five or six or seven you know however many that your art director wants you know they'll say oh i want seven different versions of this prompt and so you'll do like seven different 30 minute speed paints or sketches or whatever the art director asks right in my case i only did one and then i stuck with that one um which i could have explored some more ideas but i didn't um so that was kind of my, one of the flaws that happened or really like uh one of my missteps it's not that the painting in itself has horrible composition because it's a pretty fairly standard composition if you think about it you know your subject front and center um you see them pretty much in the center but it is kind of boring um i could have found a much more dynamic composition uh, i could have zoomed out some more uh give more of a broader look on the environment i could have made things a little bit interesting or i could have really zoomed in and cropped and just focus on on the two so um so yeah uh, so those are just some of the things i noted um but as for everything else everything worked well um oh the other thing is the lighting um shafts of light is heavily used in a lot of paintings just to kind of indicate subject matter you know uh, and in my case like the way i did my shaft of light everything that's pretty much just lit is just pretty much just the amateur and the veteran and everyone else is kind of in the dark right now as a composition choice it works but whether it's realistic or not it's very very questionable like to have this kind of lighting scheme in real life it's almost impossible for it to exist um so yeah so that's slightly questionable in my head um i mean it could kind of work during a very very overcast days but since i didn't paint overcast 
or I didn't paint clouds in the background that kind of nullified the idea that it might be overcast so so yeah um, I guess my lighting structure it's a little bit questionable. Uh, I employed the shaft of life technique that's very, very popular because I know it kind of localized the subject area. Um, but I should have done something in the background to kind of indicate that it is overcast. And that's the reason why there's only a few areas in the place that is lit. So, so yeah, but I mean, aside from those things that I kind of made note of, um, Everything worked well, you know, uh, for a three hour speed paint or however long the speed paint is. I, I'm not sure if it's three or two hour. I, I definitely know it's under four hour, this, this second version. Um, but for a speed paint, of course, it is very, very functional and it works great. And compared this to my other three hour speed paints, obviously I like this better. And that's the reason why there's a narrated uh, video of it. So, yeah. But at this point in time, I'm almost done with this illustration. I'm obviously working on the veteran. He was the last guy that I worked with. Um, his upper area, like where his face and chest is, clearly it still kind of looks too dark. Um, it should be lit a little bit more than, than it is in the final product, which of course, again, like I mentioned, I did made an edit of, so yeah. But yeah, this is this is close to being finished, and I'm really, really happy with the end product. I thought it worked out very great. So thank you guys for watching this with me. Uh, like and subscribe, and I will definitely see you guys in the next video. Good night. Mm -hmm.